have a special guest uh, joining us in studio this morning, Eric Trump. Uh, Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization uh, joins us. Thank you. Good, Good to be with you guys, as always. Uh, as always. Uh, last time we were at our old studio, we were. You, you were walking by, and I saw... <laughs> He literally calls me in. I was walking to another show. Walking I, won't, I won't mention the, the network. Please don't. Please don't. And, and Joe Please literally don't. says, come on, Eric, come in. So I ended up coming on the show. It was great. Yeah, yeah it was a good the time. History Channel, I think. Yeah, right. definitely the History Channel. Yeah, so. okay. So uh, I interviewed uh, the president last week uh, in Davos. In Davos, there was a lot uh, of similar things as uh, were in the State of the Union, but it was more globally focused, I think. But yeah. for, for a week now, we have seen... Well, and I mentioned to President Trump, the optimism in Davos was, was, was palpable, yeah. was palpable yeah. globally. And it wasn't just synchronous global growth. A lot of, of the global audience talking yeah. about the tax cuts. Yeah. And, and so we heard some of that at the State of the Union, too. I want to get into where we, your, your, the, your father's tweeting this morning about DACA uh, again. But you were at, uh, at So Too, right? You were yeah. in the, in the uh, I was. I was there the other night. I was incredibly proud of him. I think he delivered an amazing speech. Um, I think he's doing an incredible job. Uh, you see where the markets are, right? We went from 17,000 to 26,000. You see where consumer confidence is. You see jobs coming back. You know, it's funny, I reminded him a couple weekends ago that during one of the campaign rallies, he said that his crowning achievement would be if he could get Apple to come invest in, in the U.S., start building plants here, bring money back here. And sure enough, you know, last week, and I know you guys have covered this extensively, but they invest $350 billion back in this country. But it's not just the $350 billion that they're bringing back into America. It's the $38 billion you know, in, in annual taxes that that will result in. It's the 20,000 jobs that will result in. And listen, guys, you know, that's one of hundreds and hundreds of companies that are coming back here. And you, know, you, you mentioned optimism on the streets. I mean, mm -hmm. you literally have optimism on the real streets, too. When I'm walking down the street and people are coming up to me and saying, listen, you know, tell your father I say thank you. you know, the, our, my 401K is at record highs. You know, I, I got a you know, wage increase for the first time in many, many years. You know about the wage stagnation in this country more than anybody over the last 10 years. And it's real. Um, yeah, it, 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 I mean, the, it's real. It's so polarized, though, that, that you know, you've seen what some of the well-known uh, leaders of the, Demo the Democrats have said about the tax plan. I, I, I see, I, me, I see a disconnect. But they say it with a straight face, it, you know, punch in the gut for working Americans. And I, I agree to some extent, Andrew, that, that some of it, you wonder about the motivation of certain companies that, that stepped up so quickly. Some of them had things being considered by the feds, right. and, and, and some of it looked like it might be like incurring favor with, with the administration. But a lot of it looks genuine and sincere, right? And is that Absolutely. No, we've had conversations now with a number of CEOs who've explained why, why, they, why they've done this. When Howard sure. Schultz finally decided. Sure. No, that's no, what, no, that's no. when Andrew decided, wow, this well, might no, be. I was cynical yeah. about it early on. Sure. But I had a very interesting conversation in Davos with an executive who said, look, we're going to start showing profits in our quarterly earnings, big profits. Yeah. And actually, how, in terms what, of what, how do you message do you, that to your employees? But, but, if but, our, and so all of a sudden, we have to decide that we might as well do it now, get ahead of it. Rather than wait we, and chase it. Rather than, exactly. But, but the so do surprised me. The, the one number that surprised me was that, OK, so 75% is a big number of approval. It was, a C, I think, a CBS poll. But, and, and Republicans were 85. I hit refresh a couple of times because I wasn't sure if I believed that coming from CBS. But, but I mean, he but, did But, but Democrats were like 46 percent. And, and Trump, has, your father, never gotten 46 percent because there's, he's got a rock solid, I mean, I don't know. Cert, there is a certain part of the Democratic Party that's never going to accept him, even as a legitimate president. So I was surprised that, they, that that would be as high as 46. My, 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 my father ran on, he's a businessman. You, you all know him better than anybody, right? He's a businessman. He ran on one thing, making this country wealthy again and bring jobs back to this country. And he's done a great job at that, and no one can deny it. And I was at the State of the Union the other night, and I was keenly focused on the Democrats who were sitting there. And guys, they're literally, scared. Literally and and um, this isn't... This isn't one party versus the other, but everything that he said he was going to do from an economic standpoint that he's done. This country is richer. This country is $8 trillion richer, and it's getting better and better and better. The tax cuts haven't quite kicked in yet, but they, they are starting to kick in. People are optimistic about that. Deregulation has been a massive, massive thing for this country. I mean, it has, I, I went all across the country during the campaign, and every single business owner I spoke to said that we were getting choked to death. I mean, we can't, we can't operate our, our company. So... This country was at a disadvantage against so many other countries in the world that didn't have this stuff in place. To unleash the handcuffs you know, on, on so many of these businesses actually allows them to be competitive. And people want to have their businesses in the US because it's the safest place in the world. Can I ask you a tone question? Sure. Um, 
he offered a very sort of inclusive message yeah. uh, in Davos. And I would uh, say a similar message at the State of the State Union. Union. I agree. And a number of executives said to me, is this a pivot? By the way, also very balanced on Twitter over the past Sense five days. Yes. Um, but then another executive said, look, at some point he may have to play to his base. His base likes when he gets angry, when he says things that uh, may rile up the establishment. Um, is, the, is there something going on here that's oh. different, you think, or no? Listen, he was never elected as the politician. He was elected as the brash New York businessman, right? That's what people loved about my father. If, if he wanted to have that perfect tone every single time, he could go be a boring politician. Quite frankly, he wouldn't have been elected. I mean, that's not what people in this country are looking for. People in this country are looking for somebody who's sometimes, you know, a little bit direct, sometimes not exactly perfectly PC, but get results. So Although the you business might, leaders, business leaders like a little bit of certainty and even flow. And then, yeah, and you, you, you might not always Davos like his tone, that. but at the end of the day, no one on either side of the aisle can can argue with the results right now. And hey, listen, you tell me in four <laughs> years, or you tell me in eight years, right? If if, if that maintains true, but three years, right? He's he's done he's done a great job. Okay, I mean, he's it, done absolutely a great job. It's interesting what's happening with uh, there was generic Democrat versus Republican in Congress. It was like 17 points. It's almost. Zero at this point, and that was before the State of the Union. We had uh, uh, Steny Hoyer on, on yesterday. He made the comment later in, in, the, in, in later in the day. I'm just wondering. His comment later was that um, the State of the Union tried to to paint over a failing presidency. And I, when you say that with a straight face, looking at the market, looking at GDP, looking at some of the things that happened, I'm not sure that rings true, even with, with yeah. Steny Hoyer's base at this point. I mean, it's, and, and that, the stone faced and the sitting on the hands during the, the State of the Union, I, th I think that didn't necessarily well, play that's well. Kind of theater. Well, look, that's look at kind this. Of theater. Look, look at, the, it, it is, it, by the way, that's the best word for it. It is theater, right? Look at Nancy Pelosi go out there. Look at Chuck Schumer go out there. They use the same sound bites every single time. This is a tax break for the, the wealthy. I mean, it doesn't sound like they've come up with a new sound bite to use in the last decade, right? They say the, the exact same things. By every metric, this country is, is doing great. And my father's message to that say the union was actually a very American message, which is, you know, when do we put America first, right? And that, quite frankly, he won on that message. But we have to start putting the needs of our people. We have to start putting the needs of our economy. We have to put, start putting American companies, American jobs, great organizations, quite frankly, Michael, like, like yours. We need to start putting those first because there have been so many things that we've done over the last decade. But in Davos, last 20 in Davos years, he also said America first is not America alone. Uh, that that it, it is a, a sure, country because, that works with other ones we, and everybody's looking after their own we, interests. Because we've become an international world. I mean, yeah. we, we, we have become uh, one gonna world. I'm going to what, what Andrew was saying. So we're, we're over in, in Davos, and I said to the president, you know, Chuck Schumer, I think his flank is mad at the way the shutdown went. And I, I think you, you made him look bad. And he got burned. And it's going to be much tougher when we try to keep it. And, he, and you remember what uh, President said? He said, yeah, I, I, would I would never do. want to humiliate. You know, I would never say he, I got the best. Because he's negotiating with him, said, right? Yeah, on camera. Next day or day after on, on uh, remember I, I read this to you on Twitter. DACA has been made increasingly difficult by the fact that crying Chuck Schumer took such a beating over the shutdown that he is unable to act on immigration. Now, I, you know, when I read that, I, I understand where he's coming from, and I know your father, so I kind of like it. But there's some people that think he says sure. one thing, okay, and then and then the tone goes right back to. That, but his a, base loves this. That's guy. the fun brash New Yorker that we all know, right? I mean, right. we know we know plenty of those people, right? At, at the end of the day, he's a results-driven guy, and you look at you look at Chuck Schumer. His rationale for not funding a wall was the fact that it was going to cost twenty billion dollars, right? Yet. The Democrats, Obama gave Iran $150 billion. Right? Like, I can't process this. It was the same week that Apple says they're bringing $350 billion back into the country based on policy that, that he enacted. So their numbers don't compute. I mean, their numbers simply don't make sense. Their one rationale for not building a wall is the exact thing that they haven't cared about, considering our national deficit under Obama doubled. I mean, it went from nine you know, roughly $9 trillion to $20 trillion overnight. So you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. That's true. You know, we had uh, Judd Gregg on yesterday, a former Republican senator and governor, and he said that Chuck Schumer is the one who's going to decide whether things are bipartisan this year, just because that's where the votes yeah, are. You need right. 60 in the Senate this time around. So what do you think happens, just from what you see, what happens, that these two have to yeah. figure it out together? I think you'd be surprised how well Chuck Schumer and my father could work together. Um, if, if, if Chuck Schumer made that ultimate decision, too. Um, and I think you'd be surprised how much could get done um, if that decision was made.
there are things that everybody agrees with, right? Infrastructure, huge. Not just roads and bridges, right? That obviously needs to be addressed in this country, but IT infrastructure, things that will keep us competitive with you know, the rest of the developing world who have really put that on, on the forefront. Let's run, let's get that done, right? I mean, every, everybody the other night, everybody was clapping when he was talking about insurance company, the price of prescription drugs, um, you know, the, right, the, 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 the FDA process which is allowing people to have stage four illnesses to die because they can't get approval to try things right. on, on, on people who otherwise don't have any hope unless they try something experiment. Right. Everybody can agree on this. These are things that make our country a better place, that make us a better world. Let's get those things done and let's, let's not fight for the sake of fighting to protect party at all cost. A couple of business questions, uh, some items in the news. One is uh, a number of people were struck by uh, your father making comments in praising AT&T multiple times uh, in Davos uh, with Joe and, and later. Uh, of course, this AT&T Time Warner deal yeah. uh, is uh, up in the air. Uh, yeah. Randall Stevenson uh, announced his earnings yesterday, said he thought the deal would uh, go across the finish line. Uh, the president has said, uh, at least prior to the campaign, or when he was campaigning, that deal should not happen and has made lots of uh, critical comments about uh, CNN. Do you think that sure. the president's view has changed? You know, I don't know. Honestly, I don't get into policy, and I actually keep a direct, direct separation in church and state between our business and kind of, you know, mini governmental policy. But I find it interesting. I find it, it, there's a lot of them right now, right? Disney's, you know, another one. And, you know, you see what's, what's happening with, with Amazon and all of these. I mean, see what happened, quite frankly, with Bank of America. You know, if you rewind the clock six, seven years, it's is, good a, is big a good thing or is big a bad thing, right? I mean, does does too big to fail, is that a good thing for, for this, this country or is it, does it end up becoming an impediment mm -hmm. down the road in some way, shape or form? Um, right. and you, Eric, just, we, you, just, you just never know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tough call to make. We stay in our lane on, on CNBC typically, business issues, and you're here to talk about so too. But if you were to, to look anywhere else, today it's either yeah. the FBI memo uh, that, that comes out, um, and now more Mueller stuff wants to talk to Hope Hicks. Or, it, these are the things trending on Twitter. Do you pay attention to that? Do you, yeah, are of you course privy I do. To, yeah, um, what, what, I do because on? I was one of the first people in the campaign, and the, the whole Rush collusion thing is an absolute hoax. And, you know, it's, they used it as a narrative because they lost. Um, we won. Uh, we won with one-seventh the amount of resources uh, that they had. We won because we had a better candidate who, quite frankly, worked a lot harder, who had a much better message um, and a much better tone, one that America actually embraced, uh, somebody who wasn't a career politician. So they created a narrative that would give them excuse for losing despite the fact that they had every advantage. Um, right. And that's coming back did, and it's backfiring did, right did, now, did, Joe. I mean, you know it's backfiring in a big way. Has your dad seen the memo? Have you, I, I have you, not, you I have not seen the memo. I think it's, Do you think the FBI, I mean, will it eventually appear that, that maybe they had a vested interest in the outcome of the, of the election? I'm just, I mean, that's, that's the, the elephant in Listen, the Listen, I, I think it's very clear at this point that they used a memo, a dossier paid for by the Democrats to get a FISA warrant to spy on a campaign, right? There is, there is nothing good about that. And then you see all these other stories with Terry McAuliffe and, you know, the uh, donations that, uh, you know, Andy McCabe's wife was, was receiving. Right. Um, I mean, there must be, the memo's got to be it, right. Guys, it's bad but, stuff. But the, it, well, the FBI well, doesn't, doesn't want to right? release, and you think that's to protect, what, why do you think he doesn't want Look, to release? Uh, uh, Cory Booker called it treasonous to release the memo. But it's the head of the FBI who was appointed. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, FBI yeah, doesn't uh, want it out. I have a hotelier question that I have to ask. Yeah, all of Congress wants it out, so. Steve Wynn. Sure. Steve Wynn. Uh, know him very step, well. Stepping down from the RNC in, yeah. in the wake of these reports. If you're on the board of the Wynn organization, yeah. what do you do right now? It's tough. You know, we know Steve, you know, incredibly well. We, we have for, for a very long time. He's a visionary. He's done incredible things for the industry. Um, what he's built is, is, is unparalleled, right? And at the same time, the accusations are, are strong and, you know, I mean, he has, to, he has to go deal with them. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. think it's going to impact the business? I'm sure it will. Listen, you saw the stock price the other day. The stock price dropped by, you know, by uh, like 10 bucks the first day when it, when it came out. And uh, so, listen, he'll have to sort it all out. And it's a scary world, what's happening um, in regard to that. And it's, um, you know, a lot of this is coming out in a lot of companies. And it's opening up a problem that's clearly existed for, for a long time. So I think it's good that it's being spoken about across the board. But, you know, everybody has to have their day in court. But, you know, he's done a, he's done a tremendous amount for the hotel industry. He's... Um, He's built some incredible properties. He's, he's reset a bar, and um, it's going to be interesting to watch. You think he should have stepped down from the RNC? Um, he did step down from the RNC. <laughs> he did step down from the RNC, yep. so I think he ultimately made the right decision. But 
listen, I can never interject myself into somebody else's situation knowing nothing about, you know, the privacy of, of, of that case. But um, he did what he felt is, is right, and clearly, clearly we all support that. All right, great. Well, I guess Ivanka tomorrow had your pres uh, president last week, you today. Uh, wow. Where's she? No, no, wow. no, no, no. I'm wow. yeah, if, if you could talk, maybe uh -huh. next week. We'll but, make it happen for yeah, you. Yeah. All right, good. Okay. Anyway, just kidding. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. When we Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.